Hey guys, welcome to Weekly Crypto. Today I'm going to talk about EOS. There's some controversial about the block producer as well as ontology token swap. Uh, ontology is going to launch on June 30th and you have to do a token swap. Uh, before we get into that, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out the upcoming airdrop, hard fork and ICO. So just to remind you guys, there's a loop ring airdrop as well as content box uh, airdrop as well. So let's get into it. So Cypherglass is one of the block producer for the EOS blockchain and they are one of the few block producer running on their own dedicated infrastructure. So this guy retweet responding saying that 95% plus EOS block producer are running on cloud services to, end, to earn 10k per day in block reward. That cost them five only 5k per month. Oh, wow, this is a pretty lucrative uh, business, right? <laughs> and in Reddit, they talk about... <clears throat> so in Reddit, they talk about a very high percentage of EOS block producer are on Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, and on Alibaba Web Services as well. So he posted... Uh, he was a EOS supporter until the mod uh, moderator start to censor his post about the fishy things going on between the... EOS core arbitration uh, for arbitration forum, block producer and their constitution. Also, block producer are lying to the community that they are using super expense expensive hardware and whatnot. They are earning ten ten thousand per month, uh, per day, not per month. They're earning ten thousand per day for running those nodes on cloud services, which cost them only five thousand a month. So he did a research. It's like Big Finance uh, running on Google Cloud, EOS New York running on Google Cloud, EOS that is running on Amazon Web Services, Cyberglass possibly Bear. Bear, uh, Metal Cloud is basically Oracle uh, Cloud Services. So, and let's go back. Uh, EOS Soul is Amazon Web Services, EOS Canon, Alibaba Web Services, they're from China. And crypto, crypto, crypto lion, possibly bear metal cloud, which is um, Oracle Cloud Services. EOS Cafe is Google Cloud. EOS Canada, Google Cloud Services. EOS Afrodi, Amazon Web Services. And this one, uh, Amazon Web Services. Wahubi Pool is Beijing Cloud Services. EOS Gravity, Google Cloud. Liquid EOS Dimension Data Cloud Service Cloud Solution. 42 Freedom, Google Cloud, EOS Genesis, possibly Bear, and Meet.1 is Amazon Web Services, Argentina EOS is Google Cloud, Halo EOS is Amazon Web Services, Beijing Block Producer, Amazon Web Services, so EOS Sweden, Bear, Grey Mars, uh, Bear. So you can uh, check the list uh, below. Uh, I will put the link below and then you can check it out, uh, the rest of the block producer. Basically, uh, the majority of them are running on Google Cloud services. And underneath they talk about how I check it. Look at their, so look at their peering endpoint. Find the IP address of each endpoint. Then use maxmine.com to find out, their, find out who owns those IP address. You can find the IP, the, the, the block producer IP address by looking at the bp.json file. So if you look at the bp.json file, so you can find out the IP address of each of the block producer. And then from the IP address, you can just use the maxmine.com uh, to check out those IP, uh, the endpoint as well. So uh, this is pretty interesting uh, because a lot of block producers saying that, oh, why vote for me? Because I have a dedicated uh, web services and all that. And so those are some common. So EOS is the biggest scam in cryptocurrency. Uh, lots of centralization, manipulation, control, constitution violations, well, bugs, bugs everywhere. They have one year ICO. So I doubt this one will not be classified as a security. Um... Let's see. Uh, this is even more interesting. This guy talk about... 
So this guy talk about cloud engineering here. Um, services like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud are not cheap by any means. They are convenience. Having on uh, premium servers are much cheaper than cloud computing and storage in the long run. They are lazy. Who knows they won't be prop, produ prop producer tomorrow or yours will fail. Why invest in hardware? Oh, wow. So um, that is very interesting. I mean, we never thought about that. But I try to be ob objective, not just the good things. It seems like uh, a lot of people talk about a lot of good things, but then you've you got to be objective. You've got to be uh, talking both sides of the story. <clears throat> And he comment, typical of Bishir, steam it, all the insiders make the money. It is it's a permissionless pyramid scheme. The Scientology of crypto, the higher you are on the ladder, inferential, and the more familiar with the uh, incentive patterns, the more rent you can covertly extract. Take all the things you dislike in real world governance, communism, corruption, bribery, favoritism, and... Uh, Lobbying, lobbying, rent seeking, take all the things you dislike about blockchain inefficiency, scaling issues, computer security, internet mobs, put them together. You have EOS. <laughs> oh, this guy is really, really, really tough on EOS. And then, um, so aren't you a block producer, Kennedy? And then his response is so I can learn as an insider. And so, how can I become an EOS block producer? This guy is interesting because you're using the you are not in, investing in the infrastructure. You can just use the cloud services. You can just pay the monthly uh, fees to the uh, Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services. Anybody can do it, right? So this guy responds to um, say they didn't hide anything. They are straight up. If the community has a problem, they will fire the prop producer and hire the next one running bear and. Can you tell me what kind of server uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum run on and if the infrastructure is transparent to the community? And I don't see it, any issues with the cloud, so in, uh, cloud services with better scalability and reliability than bare metal. Uh, very few block producers are making uh, 10K per day and server costs are not most of the biggest expenses. So this is just go on and on. So let me know what you think about this controversial. Um, so 95% of the block producers are basically using the cloud services. They didn't invest in the uh, expensive hardware or server or whatnot, as they claim. And if you're using the cloud services like Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, or uh, those services, if they have a DDoS attack, because the services are so centralized in one area, if they have a DDoS attack, then it will be a problem. Because you can see all this on Google Cloud, uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, and all that. So this is pretty, I mean, to me, you said decentralization. To me, you, you are pretty centralized to put all this uh, infrastructure on the cloud services. So, so let me know what you think. This, is, this will be a heated debate. Uh, put a comment below. What do you think about this uh, Google Cloud? Uh, they're using the cloud services as a block producer and all that. <clears throat> do you agree or disagree? And put a comment below. So next up, we're going to talk about ontology token swap. And ontology, let's see. So the ontology token swap, which exchange is going to support the mainnet uh, token swap? Uh, Binance, Wahoobi. OK, Exchange, Upbit, KuCoin, Gate.io, Con8. Con8 have officially announced their support for the ontology magnet token swap. And so the magnet is scheduled to uh, schedule to launch on June 30th. And you probably need to send the ontology token before the magnet launch. So make sure you check with your individual exchange the instruction. <clears throat> So will I get ONG if I keep my ontology on an exchange? So ONG is essentially just like gas, just like NEO. NEO, they give out dividend like gas. So ontology, mainnet, uh, they have ONG is just like the gas, you know, they give out dividend as well. 
So Binance has already announced that they were distributing ONG to ONT uh, ontology token holder. And so one way you can do is to do the token swap. You, you can send it to the exchange, let the exchange swap it for you. Another is a manual swap. Manual swap is basically you mapping the address of the um, mainnet ontology token swap, similar to the loop ring uh, token swap as well. So you uh, have to map your uh, your right now loop ring is currently is on my ether my ether uh, is on ethereum blockchain so you map the if uh, your ethereum blockchain address to the loop ring address so it's very similar so this will be mapping from the new from the new address to the ontology magnet address so they will give us instruction later on <clears throat> So do I need both private key and the WIF uh, to do the manual swap? Uh, you can either use one, so make sure you get your private key to complete the token swap. And will the mainnet ontology be divisible? Uh, same as NEO, NEO is only, can only be one. It cannot be 0.5, 0 0.95 or whatever. So if you have tiny amount of ontology, make sure you make it as one, then it can be transferred to the from the Ethereum uh, from the Neo blockchain to the Ontology blockchain. And we'll next and Ledger support the mainnet Ontology token swap. We are uh, they are currently working on next and Ledger support for the token swap. How long do I have to wait for the Net Five Ontology to swap to mainnet? So the mainnet Ontology token swap will take up to twenty four hours. So how can I check the status of the swap? So when the ontology mainnet goes live, uh, you can use this swap.on.io to check the status of the ontology token swap. So you can put in your ontology, the public address to check the status. Uh, the status can be waiting processing, currently processing or complete. Also, you can go to explorer.ont.io, uh, which is the ontology block explorer. You can put in your ontology public address to check the mapping information. This is uh, you can use this only when the ontology mainnet launch on June thirtieth. So is there a deadline for the token swap? Uh, there's a deadline. The deadline is on October first, twenty eighteen, to complete the swap. So what happens if I don't complete the mainnet ontology token swap before the deadline? <clears throat> So if the ontology is not swapped uh, before the token swap deadline, it will remain on the NEO blockchain and not be able to transfer to the ontology mainnet. So uh, will I receive on ONG after the token swap? So your ONT will start uh, generating the ONG after the token swap is complete. So there's no fees for claiming uh, ONG uh, token. So where do I store, uh, store my ontology token after the swap? So ontology is, uh, is a completely decentralized uh, client. They have a wallet will be released in July. So just be patient. So ontology is going to release a wallet in July. And how can I create ontology wallet? So it's very similar. You create a new wallet in ontology website, but right now it's not available yet. So when the ontology wallet release, then you create a wallet, then you import your private key from the, um, and then you can load up your wallet. So I would suggest if your Neo wallet has some other token, <clears throat> I think you should just swap out, uh, you should just transfer the token to other, uh, to other Neo wallet, or you transfer your ontology token to another Neo wallet. I think it will be easier if you transfer your, your ontology token to another brand new new wallet, then you can just use that wallet to import your public key. Because if you have some other token, you don't want that wallet to be compromised, right? So Binance support the uh, ONT mainnet swap and also add on ontology uh, USD trading pair as well. So let's see. So this will be an interesting project coming up, and they also have also similar to uh, Node Producer, uh, they as well. They have a candidate list as well, so you can check it out. And let me know what you think about the ontology token swap, and also the EOS block produ block producer. Ninety five percent of the block producer are running on the uh, cloud services, and cloud services is basically very centralized because 
Remember, there's a if there's a DDoS attack on those Google Cloud services, then or Amazon Web Services, uh, that will be that will not be very good to the community. Uh, I think it happens before in I think my Eva wallet. I think my Eva wallet. They uh, early on they have um, if you still remember they have a DDoS attack. Uh, I think it's one of the cloud services as well. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> So let me know what you think about uh, the prop producer on, on cloud services. Uh, please comment below. And also uh, make sure you do the token swap and what do you think about ontology project. So if you uh, found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Uh, it will really help out my channel uh, and also the ranking in YouTube. And also uh, share with your friends uh, if you found this information helpful. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out any upcoming airdrop, hardfall and ICO. Remember, we the people take control of our money. Stay wise, stay safe, peace. I'm not a financial advisor. Investing in ICO has inherent risk. Please use the due diligence. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video.